see 22.5% unemployment, one in four houses are boarded up, 68% of the people in this neighborhood live in poverty. I mean, that's devastating. So that was a rallying cry from the mayor, and um, many of us said, it's time we stand up. It was business leaders in the area, nonprofit leaders, faith leaders, community members saying, what can we do? That's when we decided we had to go deep, and that meant servicing the entire family in a, in a very different, comprehensive way. The first smart thing we did, that doesn't always happen, is why don't we ask the residents, what do they need versus what do we think they need? Um, so we sent out 2,700 surveys. And those five things that came out of there was safe housing, health, education, jobs, and safety. You could say, what do you tackle first? Or you could say, how do we bring everybody together to do it all? No one city can do this alone. No one philanthropist or generous family can do that alone. And no one nonprofit can do it alone. It's a wonderful example of public-private partnership. That's when the city said, we have safety. The other thing was the John Maloney Health Center was built for health. And then there's six different partners working on housing in this neighborhood. So Tani and I and our board decided that our mission is going to be education and then we're going to help people get jobs. At about the same time, this building, which had been sitting vacant for five years, the mayor said, here, here's 67,000 square feet. Figure out what to do with it. The building uh, was 1904, the original building that we're sitting in. It was an elementary school from when it was founded until it closed in 2006. And then it was a swing school from 06 to 09. There were additions put on in the 1920s and then additions in the 1960s. So it's this huge building, it's a magnificent building that's vacant. There'd be all this investment and Reeb would be vacant, it would become blight, and it would be a detriment to the neighborhood rather than a catalyst. So it was Don Kelly and Mayor Coleman who were saying, if we don't do Reeb, who will? What we wanted to do was respect the building and keep the architectural integrity of the building. Every classroom we wanted to maintain as a classroom, there's still slate chalkboards. And it's funny because actually I have kids come in nowadays, they're like, what is that chalkboard? Where's my smart board? So we had the city, we had the private donors, but then the third part of that was the nonprofit community. I mean, we had nonprofits coming to us saying, we need to be down here. For example, Boys and Girls Club. We need to have a club on the south side. They took the upper floor. And then we had Godman Guild and St. Stephen's and Alvis, Digital Works. And as of two years ago, we were full. So we have 14 different nonprofits housed in this building. Really, until you come here, it's hard to imagine what that means. What does that look like? The Southside Learning and Development Center has eight classrooms, and they serve infants from six weeks old, the little itty bitty babies, up to five or six years old when they go off to kindergarten. We have one entire floor dedicated just to the adult learner. On the third floor, we have Boys and Girls Club. They serve students from six years of age to 19 years of age, and they service over 300 kids. The lower level, the garden level of the building, is the theme is community connection. And one way to bring people together is when we break bread. So half of the garden level is about food. Mid-Ohio Food Bank runs the cafe and a market. And the cafe is pay what you can, the market is also pay what you can. And what we love is that all these tenants are working together. A mom can drop her child off at the Learning Center and go to Digital Works for job training, and her older child after school could be in the Boys and Girls Club. That was the dream, and that's happening. The proof in the pudding is how are we changing the prosperity in this neighborhood. I can go upstairs to the Boys and Girls Club and see the boys and girls that have opportunities. The young men that are from the Juvenile Correction Institute that are working in our cafe that come every day, they have hope that when they're released, they have a job to go to. They have something to go to versus running from. I watch our neighbors come in these doors and I am so blown away by their dedication and their resolve to get through these barriers. This neighborhood is gonna come back and it's gonna be a thriving neighborhood. Mostly because we have people in this neighborhood that care. I truly believe abundance can only be created in community. And what the 
Cranes, the Grodys, and the Kellys did more than the checks that they wrote. They created community. That's what it really takes, and that's why this building is going to be around for generations to come.